So we have spent our first two videos on the Ambusher Pack kind of just testing the new items out. Whether it was figuring out just how good the new 44 lever action is, learning more about the takedown recurve, or of course using the electronic collar to bring stuff into bow range. So today, I want to have a little bit more fun, so we're bringing these weapons to Te Aoroa. There should be an abundance of game, plenty of opportunities, so let's see what happens. And the opportunities that I mentioned kind of look like this. There are going to be a lot of situations, whether it's Feral Goat, Red Deer, potentially Shammy, and those sorts of things, where we can get a lot of shooting in in a short period of time. So I'm not actually sure what all the electronic color can bring in on Tay, but we're going to worry about the 44 at least in this case. Hopefully we can get at least three of these things. We'll just see how quickly they react, but we're around 200 meters out, so we're going to scoot in just a little bit closer so we don't have to worry about any kind of bullet drop. It's even more Red Deer. Right over in here, they might be easier to go for. Maybe we give him a sec? Actually, that's the only one that's alert, so if we go for him first... Almost got that third shot off in time, and I think if we timed up the animations just right, we probably could have done it. And even those red deer over there are still actually hanging around. Now, 300 meters, I think is the first mill dot with the Hyperion scope. That looked perfect. And we've actually done this one other time with the red deer a little further away and got like 75% quick kill. So this is the kind of stuff I'm hoping to accomplish here. But I am curious about the electronic color. So real quick, we're just going to throw that down. So we can call in turkeys, obviously, fallow deer, red deer, sika deer, mallard, and feral pig. I was hoping maybe to be able to call in chamois or feral goats, but I think sika deer can be kind of fun. But one of our first two red deer dropped really not far at all from where we shot them. Double on him, this would have been the second one. Just out of curiosity, 100% quick kill at 134 meters, not bad. And then the other one, I kind of think we double lunged him too. Just not sure what direction he ran. Oh, he's literally right at the top of the hill, so I would imagine that's also going to be 100% quick kill, and like I said, we're not looking to test things out necessarily, but it definitely does interest me just how good this thing can be. That was a level 6 gold, just about right on the nose, point zero one above, and 100% again, pretty nice. Now we know our long shot didn't accomplish that, but it's laying right there, it didn't go far. But three red deer down, another potential gold there. That one's a little bit smaller rag, 164. I had to know, 81% quick kill seems pretty consistent. 300-ish meters, 75, 80% quick kill. Not too bad, but it is almost Sitka Deer and Fallow Deer drink time. So I think we'll give them a little bit of time. We should actually go and check what respawned from our great one because I literally have not been back there. But in the meantime, maybe we can snag another red deer or two. That is not an impressive chamois, a level one. I don't even know if we have one of these. And I actually, I was gonna try to sneak up here and get it with the 44, but we're 34 meters out. I actually took the range fighting sight off the recurve because I did think it was a little bit ridiculous. If we zero for 40 and aim just a touch low, that smoked it. Basically just did a face plant. Vital blood and all. And that might actually be a hall of shamer. Now, I don't think we keep our progress here in this early access. I'm not actually 100% certain, Flesh, liver, stomach, and left lung. Not bad. A bronze at 30.39. So barely a bronze. Just in case we do keep our progress, I will tax this. Because I'm pretty confident we don't have a Hall of Shame chamois. And of all things, you know, one of the reasons I chose Tay, minus the fact that we could get a ton of fallow deer, red deer, feral goats, those sorts of things in big herds, was the fact that there's a couple of class 3 things. Chamois, feral goat, and... I kind of like that we have that class 3 ability with the 44. So naturally, the first class 3 we shoot is with the Reeker. So kind of interesting thing about the Seeker Deer Caller is actually the Red Deer audio. You can probably hear that. And at first, I didn't really understand it. But then I remembered when Teoroa came out, the actual like manual color that you use to bring in Seeker Deer is in fact the Red Deer Caller. I'm not really sure why. It never made a lot of sense to me, but I suppose that's why we get the same thing on the electronic color. So if there were one thing as far as Sika Deer that I would really like to see change there, as we have another one coming in, maybe we'll just fire that color back up. It would be just to add like the regular live animal bugles. 
Because they sound really cool, and I think it would actually be quite neat to bring them in with an actual bugle sound rather than the red deer. Some other animals in the game have, on the electronic color, the same audio as the actual animals make, not as the color makes. So, I feel like that could be done. So perhaps a tougher shot here. I'm gonna actually try to alert him. And we're gonna go for this 60 meter shot. The wind's not too bad. Oh, that dropped him. I gotta say, I feel like there's a lot more consistency out of this recurve than I would have expected. At the moment, we don't have like any archery perks actually enabled. Everything that we have is still from when we were doing our foul deer grind. So some of the enhancements you can get to bow hunting aren't even there right now and we just dropped in a 60 meter shot looks like just about perfect liver stomach intestines and right lung so we lucked out a little bit we had to aim to the right because of the wind a 149 gold though not half bad and again i think it would be especially neat to call in some of those deer like in the areas they can be thick stuff like this where you can't see very far just having like that bugle audio, to me, it would just make it a more immersive experience. Now, we could just call in all of our Sika Deer with the e-collar, but I think we have to use the 44 at least a little bit. Round a 200 meter shot. No chance. And <laughs> exactly to be expected for something smaller like a Sika Deer. They are a class 4 animal, but they're the same weight ranges as Axis Deer, which are class 3. That never made a ton of sense to me, but able to drop that one. And there was one other. They didn't spook from that, but they heard it. That's about 250. And that's kind of in that awkward area. We got to hold a little bit low with the first mill dot. Looked like it dropped right in there, and he's going down quite quickly, so I'd say it did. Is this pig aggressive, by the way? It is. I've been hearing it. I was wondering what was going on. That ought to take care of that. So now we have three kills just coming down here. Not anything super special. Most of the Seeker Deer around here seem to be quite small. Brain shot that with a recurve, though. And no real surprise, the 44 is just as capable of dropping a Seeker Deer in his tracks with a double lung shot. 187 meters dropped right in there in front of the shoulder. Pretty much exactly what we're looking for. And I am curious, just as to where the impact was on this one. Definitely vital blood, so... Not some kind of weird intestine shot that just brought it down quick because the gun is absurd. Right long. How'd we do that? We shot a little far forward. So otherwise, it probably still would have dropped it. Nearly hit it in the heart. So the impact was basically perfect given the angle. Could have been a touch further back, but we'll take it. 91 scoring silver. And we should be well into Fallow Deer drink time by now. Of course, when we were grinding, Fallow Deer started coming in really late to their zone, so I wanted to make sure stuff would be there. But let's just go up to the lake that we shot our great one, which still has hunting pressure at it, by the way, and just kind of see what's around. And in fact, looks like stuff is still coming in. A couple of white fallow out here. Pretty good size level for there. And that 300 meter opportunity that we've talked about. Now, getting the lead right could be quite a thing here because it's a slow moving round. I think, yeah, that got it. It's really challenging to get the hold over correct and also the lead i find combining those two things is probably the biggest challenge with this gun it has those capabilities using the mill dots the hyperion scope 300 meters with the argus scope the third dot down is almost dead on a 400 you have to aim a little low with it but when you combine that with trying to shoot something on the walk that can be a little much pretty darn cool though not a bad size fallow 219 double lunged it Maybe a tad high again, combining the holdover and the lead to get just right can be tough. Not bad though, 297 meters away. And again, because the fallow deer are still working their way in here, we may actually just jump away, look at some other spots, and then come back to this. Just to kind of see if anything else special is around. Look at the size of that Sika deer, a level 5. I haven't seen a level 5 Sika in forever. Like, we used to kill a lot of Diamond Seeker Deer, and it just kind of stopped happening. And this is literally because those Fallow Deer were late. We were more or less done with Seeker Deer. So the question is, can we try to call it in to this tower here and maybe get it with the Recurve Bow? I think that could be pretty cool. I wonder what fur variation that was. I couldn't tell over here in the fog, but that is 
That is so cool to see. It has been a while. This is 18 meters, so we're going to just put this here. Not going to turn it on until we get into the tower so this guy doesn't get any closer and spook. Gotta say, that is one of the cooler things, the way we can actually set this up. We'll just slip up into here. Go ahead and turn the collar on now. And hopefully he's going to come in right to where we have it. And it is interesting. These ones that have two options, this is the second time we've had this, where they don't come into the first call, swap to the other option, and they start coming right in. So I'm going to actually swap back to the other one, only because it's a little less frequent. And now that he's attracted the call, it shouldn't matter. He should come into this. Now our level three just kind of stopped here at 25 meters. The five's still heading across. He's at 34 right now. Kind of getting downwind a little bit. I'm hoping maybe he'll come just a little closer, but that's a shot we can make if he wants to stand there. That's a little more like it though. Coming into around 30. I wonder if he's going to go to the same spot here. Because if he stops at that, Looking at 25, that's definitely a shot we could go for. Gotta make sure he's going to stay there. It looks like he will. Oh, going to walk a little bit yet. I mean, closer is definitely better. Interesting, he's actually coming towards the tower right now. Got to be careful not to hit him in the head, too. Going to let down the draw. If he'll stand still, we'll wait till he maybe moves his head a little bit. And just drop that shot right in there. That guy's not even going to spook from it. Recurve is pretty darn quiet, so we just doubled up from the tower here. And let's hope that level 5 is big enough. That is, I think, kind of the smaller rack for a level 5 secret here, but kind of got that shot in along the left side of the head, in through the neck potentially, and definitely Vital Blood. So fingers crossed, our first diamond with the recurve bow and with the e collar in the heart. Literally perfection. That is so cool. 16 and a half meters. 199 score. I mean, that could not have worked out any better for whatever reason. The three wanted to stay there and I couldn't turn that color off. But this guy walked right in and gave us that perfect kind of frontal shot. Head turned to the side so we didn't have to worry about the skull shot and ruining the trophy. Just a really, really cool encounter just there. Let's get this thing off. Helped us out just plenty there in getting both of those secret deer. This one, we double lunged, so had the five stop broadside at 25 like him, I feel like we could have made that shot just as easily, but I think it turned out a little bit cooler, the way that he kind of walked in and gave us that heart shot. By the way, it looks like a respawn from the great one. Maybe just Irish Elk Jr. Look at that level four out there. Super, super wide set rack. Interesting estimate to 175 to 216. So knowing how quickly Fallow Deer tend to flee now, we're probably only looking at getting two, maybe three of these with the 44. But I think we'll try to line that up. So we'll get into 150 so we don't have to worry about the holdover. Definitely try to get this guy first, then maybe this other big one. The only problem is, this level 2 just stood exactly in the way. So we're at 160. Maybe we can fire these shots quickly enough to get the 2 and the 4 and just kind of figure it out from there. So let's try that. I guess we'll just get a different level two instead. So we got three of them. Just kind of worked out. One decided not to flee. And they all dropped in their tracks immediately. I'm trying to think back to using the 308. I think most of the time that would probably happen. But there were certainly some good vital hits where they take at least a couple of steps. All three of these just crumpled right up. Not saying it would be like a better grinding gun than the 308. But for whitetail grinds and fallow grinds, I could definitely see myself using the 44 over something like the 308 or even the M1. Now this guy, a 203 score, literally looks almost exactly like our Irish elk rack, just obviously considerably smaller. Hard shot him, by the way. Not a bad deal when that was not the first one we got to shoot. We will take that. So I did want to try to get a couple of feral goats. They are... Kind of like Hog Deer over on Emerald Coast, a more resilient Class 3 animal. So we're going to rest to their drink time and just kind of see what we can do with the 44 on them. Now my intention was to maybe hunt feral goats a little bit more, but we've actually had a pretty good hunt here. And I think what we can do, because these goats are just beyond 200, we should be able to shoot this guy, not with a recurve. And I don't think those other ones are going to spook. They'll hear it. 
but we should be able to kind of take our time with the follow-up. So again, they're resilient, but still took it down way faster than really any other option. So we're looking at about 200 now. Did that second shot hit? I think he managed to duck out of there. The first one, I believe, got it. Or is it that one? Maybe it wasn't as good a shot as I thought. I want to say that's the one because he looks hit to me. That'll do a little bit better. I wonder where that hits. Now that is either medium bleed rate blood or like intestine blood. Oh, we hit, I see. That was non-vital blood. We hit the vertebrae and the spinal cord. So close to a perfect shot too. If that were just a touch lower, that one ended up double lung. First shot, a little bit too low. 205 meters tried to kind of hold over there and didn't get enough. Interesting. And by the way, I think because our other one kind of got a running start after we shot it, ended up sliding all the way down the hill and floating over to where we hit him from. But this one, we know we hit just a little bit better. Lung, liver, stomach. Got that white variation. They look so much nicer now. Almost a silvery color. But no big deal there at 170 meters, 165 scoring gold. And for a hunt where I just wanted to come out and just have some fun, blast away at red deer, goats, fallow deer, we end up getting a big sick deer diamond with the recurve. So again, I'm actually not sure if our progress kind of carries over or not, but we'll go put it in the lodge just in case. Now we do have an old 200.8 right here. Beside it is a 199. I'd kind of get around that platform to show it, but it's the spotted variation and it might be the only diamond spotted variation we have. So we're going to take down the old 200 only because I think the circumstances surrounding this one were just a little bit cooler. Might've been the same fur type. I actually didn't pay attention and the rack is different. It's more the same as the 199. Same basic frame and you can see a couple of little differences there. But that was that was such an unexpected twist to this hunt. Getting that with a recurve at 60 meters with a hard shot. I mean I just could not have asked for it to go any better. So really cool way to kind of wrap up early access here for the ambusher pack. Of course it comes out on Tuesday. We'll be streaming tomorrow with it yet. Giving it one last look in our next video will be in the live game and whatever happens it will be carrying over but on that note that's gonna do it for this video so as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time